it is my pleasure to bring you the first look and review of the brand new IdeaPad 5 Pro. And what's even better is I have two of them, one with an Intel 11th gen CPU and one with an AMD Ryzen 5000 processor. If you aren't familiar with the IdeaPad 5 series, let me refresh you because it's one of the most important laptop series in recent times. In 2020, the IdeaPad 5 laptops, particularly with Ryzen 4000 CPUs, were one of the best devices of the year. The IdeaPad 5 15 and 14, which I have right here, really revolutionized the budget laptop category. They were the first budget laptops that combined a super powerful CPU with a good enough screen, a great keyboard, and they were very lightweight to boot. All in all, they were really the first budget laptops that didn't sacrifice much. In fact, in my best of videos throughout 2020, I awarded the IdeaPad 5 15 the best budget laptop you could buy. Heck, to this date, my reviews of these laptops are the most viewed on this channel. The only major thing wrong with them was that the colors on the displays weren't that accurate, so you couldn't really use them for photo or video editing. Plus, there were some other little things that I would love to see improved, such as a more premium build quality, better webcam, and less fan noise. Well, today is an exciting day because I have with me the next iteration of these great laptops that promises to deliver a lot more for only around $100. US dollars. At least, that's what Lenovo tells me. Now, keep in mind, these are prototypes, so things may be different in the final models. Also, these laptops come with a variety of configurations. For example, my silver model has an Intel 11th gen processor paired with a 25 watt NVIDIA MX450 graphics. My dark gray model has a Ryzen 5000 series processor with a more powerful NVIDIA 1650 graphics, which Lenovo tells me will also be available with the newer, more powerful RTX 3050 graphics. Because of the variations of components and the fact that these are early stage units, I'm not going to go quite as bonkers as I would normally with my performance tests. But instead focus more on what it's like to use these laptops. Oh freak, in my excitement, I forgot to introduce myself. If you're new here, I'm Josh, and I talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of hours that goes into making these, and it also makes my mum very happy. Let's start off with the look and feel of the laptop. The Ryzen 5000 model is a dark grey and the Intel model is a light grey. I prefer the colour of the Intel model. With its lid closed, it's not quite as stunning as a MacBook Pro 16, but it's also not too far off. Not bad for a mid-range laptop. With its lid open though, it does look a little cheaper than a higher end device like the MacBook Pro. That being said, it certainly feels like a high quality build, much improved from the plastic feeling IdeaPad 515 from 2020. There are minimal bezels around the display and the laptop can be opened with one hand. One thing that I did like a lot about the IdeaPad 515 from last year was how lightweight it was at 3.6 pounds. These new models are heavier, but then again the chassis is better quality than that device. The Intel model with the MX450 weighed in at 4.3 pounds and the AMD model with the G4 1650 at 4.4 pounds. This is in line with the MacBook Pro 16's weight at 4.3 pounds, so it's still not too bad. The Intel variant comes with either an i5 113 h CPU or an i7 11370H, which mine has. These are the rather confusing new H35 watt Intel parts. Confusing because they are still 4 core and 8 thread 11th gen Tiger Lake laptop CPUs, the same as the CPUs we've been looking at for the last 9 months months or so. The only difference is they are supposedly designed to work with higher wattage. Where this falls apart is manufacturers have been feeding the original 11th gen Tiger Lake laptop CPUs with high wattage anyway. I'm looking at you HBNV14. So performance here really isn't that much better as you're about to see. It is nice that the Intel models do come with an Nvidia MX450 graphics as that will provide a nice boost to graphics. Let's talk about the more interesting AMD variants. You can get it with either the Ryzen 5 5600H or Ryzen 7 5800H, which mine has. These are super powerful processors with 6 cores and 12 threads and 8 cores and 16 threads respectively. I expect these to annihilate the 4 core 8 thread Intel variants. The AMD variant also comes with a GTX 1650 and I believe that in the future you may be able to get it with an RTX 3050. Performance of the laptop can be controlled in Lenovo's Vantage software. There is intelligent cooling, which is normally a good balance of keeping the laptop quiet and performing well. An extreme performance, which has the laptop running at its full max performance. I ran all my performance tests on extreme performance. Let's start off with Geekbench, which tests a variety of performance tasks. 
you can see that the newer H35 Intel model does actually perform better than the Ultrabook 11th Gen CPUs that have come before it, like in the Dell XPS 13 or the HP Envy 14. The Ryzen 5800H model performs much better in multi-core, but it's still not as strong as the HP Omen, a gaming laptop with the same Ryzen processor. As you can see, the MacBook Air with Apple's phenomenal M1 chip still beats out both in this test. Now let's switch to Cinebench, which runs the CPU at max. Here we can see the Intel model performing a decent amount better than prior Ultrabooks with Intel's 11th gen CPUs. But it's really the Ryzen model that shines in this test. Its extra 4 cores are being utilised here. It performs very well for a mid-tier device, however not as well as the HP Omen with the same CPU. Let's take a look at why this might be the case. When we look at power delivery, the Omen just feeds more power to the CPU, so that explains it. Take a look here that the IdeaPad 5 Pro is delivering a lot more power to the AMD variant than the Intel one. This isn't overly surprising given that the AMD model has double the threads and cores. It's actually pretty impressive how little extra power it draws for almost double the performance in multi-core. Let's see how well the laptop can sustain its performance. As you can see here, when I ran Cinebench on repeat for 10 minutes, I did not see much of a performance drop, which demonstrates an effective cooling solution. Now, when we look at CPU temperatures under full load, you can see a good result for the Ryzen model and a decent result for the Intel model. At least it doesn't hit boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius like the Dell XPS. That being said, the Ryzen's model's better performance comes at the expense of extra fan noise. By the way, remember how the HP Omen performed better with the same Ryzen CPU? Look how much louder the fan noise from that laptop is. It sounds like a jet engine, and I wouldn't take the trade-off for a bit of extra performance versus the IdeaPad 5 Pro. The laptop feels very cool to the touch when using it for light tasks like browsing the web. You don't have to deal with warm temperatures like on the Dell XPS 13 for those tasks, but then again these are much larger laptops. When under max load, both these laptops feel pretty cool to the touch, particularly the Intel model, but then again it doesn't perform as well as the Ryzen model. Turning to graphics, let's take a look at Firestrike. The full 25 watt NVIDIA MX450 in the Intel model performs very well, giving you a nice performance boost over the integrated graphics in something like the Dell XPS. That being said, it can't compete with the 1650 in the Ryzen model, which is substantially more powerful. Notice how the Ryzen IdeaPad 5 Pro beats out the HP Envy 14 with a supposed more powerful 1650 Ti Max-Q. I did note in my review of that laptop that its graphics underperformed. I'll post a link to that review in the description below, check it out as it's a good one. It's a similar story when we look at TimeSpy. I can't wait to see how much better this laptop performs with the RTX 3050 it's apparently getting. So overall, performance on this laptop is very good for how cool it feels to the touch and the fan noise. The Intel model with the H35 CPU and MX450 graphics is a nice step up from Ultrabooks. The Ryzen model with the 8-core CPU and beefier graphics is a very competent performance laptop that will be good enough for some fairly intensive tasks. Inside the laptop, the fan and cooling system seems robust with two large fans. I don't see replaceable RAM, but do see an upgradable SSD. The port situation is ample. You've got two USB-A ports, albeit the slower 3.2 Gen 1 ports. You've also got an HDMI port 1.4B, and for the models with the integrated graphics or the less powerful GeForce MX450, charging will be via a USB-C power adapter, and both USB-C ports do support charging. On the models with the more powerful dedicated graphics, i.e. the GeForce 1650 and above, they use Lenovo's charging port to power the device. My model with the GeForce 1650 came with a 135 watt charger. Please note that even those laptops can be charged from their single USB-C port, and I powered my Ryzen 5000 model with a tiny 45 watt USB-C charger while doing light tasks such as browsing the web, and there was no battery drain. For the Intel models, one of the USB-C ports supports Thunderbolt 4. For the Ryzen models, the fastest you'll get is USB-C 3.2 Gen 2. You've also got an SD card reader, which although handy performed poorly in my tests. Unfortunately, I was getting slow speeds in line with a UHS-1 card reader. The sound from the two down-facing speakers at the front of the laptop gets reasonably loud and is clear, but it lacks a soundstage and bass. The display is a monstrous leap forward on so many dimensions. It's got a large 16-inch display at 2560 by 1600 resolution with an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. And what's super cool is it runs at a fast 120 hertz refresh rate. Let's stop for a moment. Seriously, those are some really awesome specs. Everything looked super sharp at this resolution, and with that fast refresh rate, any movement like scrolling a web page was very smooth. In fact, in my Excel test, which I used to show how much information I can comfortably see on screen without needing to squint, at the default 150% window scaling, I saw an excellent 41 lines of Excel. 
But if I drop the scaling down to 125%, which I found very viewable, I saw a monstrous 52 lines. Absolutely fantastic if you intend to do productivity work on this laptop. Compared to its predecessors, the IdeaPad 5 15 and 14, this display is brighter and the color accuracy has been fixed with an excellent 100% sRGB score. This monitor is excellent for most use cases, although dedicated photo editors should still look elsewhere as the colors aren't quite accurate enough for that use case. Overall, two thumbs up for the display. Oh, I believe there will also be a 60Hz refresh rate version of the display with similar specs. That will be in some units, so if you do want that fast 120Hz refresh rate, make sure you buy the right model. The keyboard is outstanding. There is no odd things in the layout, it's got a numpad, it's backlit with two levels, and importantly it feels very comfortable. A little low travel, but honestly as far as laptop keyboards go in 2021, it's one of the more comfortable ones. The trackpad is a very good one. It's large, tracking is accurate, and the click is good enough. It's not the absolute best trackpad I've used on a Windows laptop, but you won't have any issues with it. One thing that I want to address is that the trackpad is not centered on this chassis. This is 100% the correct placement. It is shifted to the left because this keyboard has a numpad, and therefore the whole thing is shifted to the left. The webcam really isn't great. Here it is in excellent lighting conditions. Oh, and by the way, a little birdie told me that in the very near future, we're going to get much better webcams in laptops. By the way, if you are wondering what this bar is, at the top of this laptop, it houses a Windows Hello IR camera for login. There was no fingerprint reader though in my models. The laptop comes with a sizable 75 watt hour battery that provides excellent run times. I ran both laptops on battery saver mode with brightness down three notches, playing Netflix movies over Wi-Fi for 3.5 hours. The AMD model had 48% battery remaining and the Intel 56%. This means you should get at least seven hours on the AMD model and around eight on the Intel model. Keep in mind, I'm certain that if you dim the screen further, you'll be able to eke out around an extra hour. These really are very good battery results on a large and powerful laptop, particularly the 8-core AMD model with the GeForce GTX 1650. Lastly, pricing. This was one of the greatest benefits of the IdeaPad 5 15 and 14. They were very affordable. I remember seeing top spec models with 16 gig of RAM for under 800 US dollars. I think I saw them priced for around 600 for the entry level models. Anyway, according to my sources, these should be around 100 US dollars more for similar specs. However, as we know, this new Pro model can be spec with some pretty powerful components, so I'd imagine it will be priced in the lower to mid range for laptops. This brings me to my conclusion. If these laptops come in at $1,000 US dollars or under, especially for the Ryzen model, the IdeaPad 5 Pro will be one of the main laptops I recommend most people buy. I'll basically be asking the following. Do you need a lot of portability? Then get the MacBook Air. Do you want more productivity? Get the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Its larger screen and more powerful components, particularly in the Ryzen model, will really make a difference for office work, programming, and even light to medium weight video editing. Heck, the 120Hz refresh rate on the screen, and as I said, those decent gaming graphics, will give you a very good eSports gaming experience as well. Look, Lenovo really have done a superb job with this laptop. I'm super tough in my reviews, and for me to say, I will be recommending this laptop for most people for around the thousand US dollar price range is a big win. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would truly appreciate it. And so would my mum. For behind the scenes coverage and just generally what's going on in my life, please follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. Links in the description below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.